This is chapter 7.1 about the transport layer and the transport layer protocols. The role of the transport layer is to establish a communication between two applications and two different devices and delivering uh, data between them. Uh, in TCP IP we have two protocols that takes care of this. It's the Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, and the User Datagram Protocol, UDP. The primary responsibilities for the transport layer is to, to track the individual communication between the different applications uh, on the source and, and uh, destination hosts, and to segment the data to divide them up in smaller parts and send them into streams between the different um, data uh, and uh, applications and to identify the proper application so that when we send something we will know exactly which application it is sent to. So here instead of addressing a specific host on the network we are now addressing specific um, applications. So that, for instance, if I'm, if I'm sending something to a web server, the packet or the segment, when it's received at the host, will know that this will be sent to my browser, since this is a, a web request. Or if it's a voice over IP, it will be sent to my um, IP phone. Um, so it will know the different types of um, applications that's communicating over the network. The segmenting of the data means that it will divide them up to smaller pieces and put a header on each every segment. So here, uh, on the same computer, at the same time, we can have different applications communicating with the network at the same time. We can have an email program open, we can have multiple web pages, we can have uh, uh, IP phones, we can have streaming of video, instant messaging. So all of them are actually communicating on the same computer at the same time with the network. We need just to be able to differentiate them and we do that by addressing the different, uh, the different applications. When these things are sent out to the network, they will just be multiplexed, which means that they will actually be sent out on the same cable, but we know that there are different types of traffic. So the segmenting, uh, the segmentation that we do and the multiplexing allows different applications to communicate with the network at the same time. When we talk about the transport layer reliability, it's different whether we are using TCP or, ED or UDP. TCP is a reliable uh, protocol, which means that it will check everything that and check that everything is received uh, in order. Um, and that you acknowledge that you have received it. Uh, if something goes wrong, it will resend it. Um, it also checks that the destination is present on the on the network before starting sending it. Uh, it makes larger demands on the network because you have more overhead here because you need to do a lot of checking when you're using TCP. Whereas when you're using UDP, you don't check anything. There are no reliability at all, um, and of course it's faster and less overhead. Um, and sometimes it's okay if you're if it's more important that you have a, a, a fast bandwidth uh, than if everything is received correctly. Then it's okay to use UDP for some types of application. For instance, streaming, it's okay to use TCP or to to use UDP. The TCP protocol looks like this. If you look at the headers, um, it's a connection-oriented protocol, which means that it will create the session before starting sending data. It's reliable. Um, it will retransmit either lost or corrupt data. It has an ordered data reconstruction, which means that it segments and set number on all the segments so that you can make sure that it will be assembled in the same way that it has been sent. We have flow control so, which regulates the amount of data that's transmitted um, and we have something called it's a straightful, 
stateful protocol so it tracks every session whereas the UDP protocol is a connectionless it does not check in any way if the one that you are sending to is present on the network before you start sending it it's unreliable it doesn't check anything it doesn't resend anything it has no uh, reassembly of the data in the correct order there is no flow control and it's a stateless protocol different applications that uses uh, UDP is for instance DNS and it's also video streaming and voice over IP to be able to keep track on the different types of, um, of uh, applications communicating with the network these two protocols, both TCP and UDP, uses the port numbers to address the different uh, net, the different applications communicating with the network. So each um, application has their own port number. For instance, the email uh, protocol has the port number 110. HTML or, or the web HTTP has port number 80 and instant messaging is using port number 531 so in this way we can know which um, which application that we are sending that information to for instance here if I want to send something to an FTP server I use port number 21 which is the FTP uh, port number and if I want to send something to the web server, the destination port is set to 80, which is the HTTP port number. Then we have this destination or the source port as well, and that is normally just sent to a random number. Um, whereas it's important that the destination port is set to the application number that we are going to send to. And these numbers, the port numbers, is a 16-bit number, meaning that we have 65,000, more than 65,000 port numbers. The first one from 0 to 1,023 are the well-known numbers. It's for instance, for the well-known protocols in the TCP IP protocol. We have FTP, which is number 20 and 21. We have Telnet, 23. The SMTP, which is the protocol that providing us emails, uh, has port number 25. HTTP, port number 80. POP3, another mail protocol, 110. Um, HTTPS, 443, and so on. And then there are these registered ports. For instance, MSN Messenger is using 1863. And these are port numbers from, from 1024 to 49151 these are the registered ports and here are some some other types as well we have the radius server for a uh, authentication is using 1812 uh, we have the zip value for voice over ip is using 5040 um, ms is using 1433 and so on so these port numbers uh, tells us which uh, application we are sending to and from you can actually see that if you're using the netstat command on your computer you will be able to see on which port numbers that we are listening in on um, Transport layer will divide the data into pieces and adds a header for each and every one of them. Uh, in UDP, we call it a UDP datagram, and in TCP, we are calling it a TCP segment. And that was it.